Hey, it's Jeremy here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create drop shadows in Illustrator CC. On these two artboards here, I've got two letter S's, and if I zoom in, you'll see this one has a blurred drop shadow effect that's really quick and easy to do. And this one has a, another hard shaded drop shadow as well that really makes it stand out and pop. You can use this effect for typography, illustrations, anything like that, and it's really going to be beneficial to you. So I'm just going to Go down here, I already have two of the letter S's that I've created. I'm going to jump on this first artboard here. And what I'm going to do is just select the typography. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my appearance panel. So to open your appearance panel, you want to go to the window at the top left corner and go down to appearance under A. Click that and you should get this box pop up here. So you can see because this is typography and it's not outlined, it's just, it's editable type which is good. So that means it will, the effect will add it on the other letters as well. I can, it's going to say type here in your appearance panel, which is cool. So what we're going to do first, select it and want to click this little FX button. You want to click that drop down menu and we want to go to stylize and click drop shadow. And we want to get a few options here. And in order to see the options, we have to click this preview button here. And now you can see the drop shadow is sort of added there. First up, what I'd like to do is select the right color. So I'm going to click this little swatch box here. You'll get the color picker, which is pretty cool. But what we want to do is select colors from our swatch panel. So I'm going to click color swatches. And whenever you're adding a drop shadow, you want to make sure that the color is the same as your background or whatever element is behind it, because then the color is going to blend well and it's going to look nicer. So what I've done is selected the same color of this background. So you can see this brown color. We can go to black, which is fine but I'm going to leave it on this brown here and press OK. And the second thing you want to do is change your blending mode. So you can see if it's on normal, you can't really see it, but if I multiply it, it's going to multiply that brown, that same brown color and multiply that on the background color. So that's really useful. You can bump up the opacity as well, which is going to increase how much of the effect is being seen. So I can drop it down. I can raise it. Usually when I'm doing drop shadows, I try and keep it around 50%, 40%, which is pretty cool. But I'll leave it high so you guys can see it. Um, the X offset and the Y offset. This allows you to pretty much change how far the drop shadow is going to go. So you can see if I'm, I'm just holding shift and clicking the arrows and you can see it's increasing. It's dropping the shadow lower. So the Y is the vertical and the X is the horizontal, as you can see there. So you can make it really subtle and make it really short or really long. It's up to you. The cool thing about this effect as well is it's got a blur effect. So you can see you can just have a hard shadow like that. Or we can have a blur. So if you increase it, you can see the blur increases. Just keep in mind that it might lag because this effect is using a blur effect. It's like a raster effect. So it can increase um, your processing power. So I'm just going to leave it on 15, press OK, and you can see now I have that job shadow. And you can looks pretty cool. And the cool thing is I can type, and it's a live job shadow. So that's super handy. I can change the color, and the job shadow is still going to be there. As you can see there. So this is a live effect, a live thing, a live way you can add those job shadows there. So... Once again, we can use a drop shadow doing the same method here, but another method we can do is just copying paste this. So I'll control C, control F, copy this, and I'm just going to hold shift and drag it down. You can also just bump it using the, the arrow keys as well. I'm going to change the color to brown. I'm going to go to object, arrange, send backward. So it's going to bring it behind this letter. What I'm going to do now is go to my transparency panel. So go to Window tr and Transparency to open that window. I'm going to go to that Window panel and I'm going to change the Blend Mode to Multiply. So now you can see it's sort of multiplied it like what happened here. And I'm going to drop the opacity to 40% because it was too harsh. I want to make it look more brown. So you can see there we have that drop shadow. And then now what I can do, select these two together, press Control G to group them. And now we have that letter. So the cool thing about this way is that 
you know, you can have two separate letters here to and this shadow is separate so I can always move it around Which is handy So, you know, I can always play around with it. So it gives you that flexibility So ch changing the position will change where the light is hitting it whether it's from the bottom or the top and it can give different effects So yeah, there's are two ways to how to add drop shadows in Illustrator CC Hopefully this tutorial was beneficial. Let me know in the comments what tutorials you want to see and click subscribe to get some fresh design tutorials every week.